In this lesson, we are going to discuss Scrum theory. And here I have written some notes for you. The highlighted means these questions might come in your exam. So the Scrum theory says that Scrum is founded on empiricism and lean thinking. Now, what is the meaning of empiricism and lean thinking? Again, I will try my best to make it easy. So empiricism asserts that knowledge comes from experience, right? So simple and everyone knows that knowledge comes from experience and making decisions based on what is observed. We means what we observe on the basis of that observations, we make decisions. So this is the simple definition of empiricism. Now we talk about the lean thinking. Lean thinking reduces waste and focuses on the essentials. Means it says that we have to reduce waste and we have to focus whatever is necessary or whatever is essentials. Scrum employs an iterative. Iterative means the four points which we had discussed in my last lesson. If they repeat again and again and again, we get some feedback and we try our best to make the second sprint more better compared to the previous one. So it is the iterative process. Incremental approach means each sprint add value to optimize predict predictability and to control risk. Scrum engages groups of people who collectively have all the skills and expertise to do work and the share or acquire such skills as needed. This is very, very important point. It means that in our scrum team, we can have mix and match means all the team mean members should have some different kind of skills. Suppose if we are building a house, some team member should be ex should know the labor work, right? Some should know the accounting work, some should know the engineering work or so and so on. So that is why it says have all the skills and expertise to do work and share or acquire such skills as needed. Scrum combines four formal events for inspection and adaptation within a containing even the sprint, right? As we had discussed in our last lesson, that first product owner makes the product backlog. He will write all the items which we need in order to build a house. Then one by one, we will take one and two. And then suppose if I will take the first one that is called the uh, framing. So this is called the sprint. And in a sprint, we have four formal events, which we will discuss later on in detail. But these four formal events for inspection and adaptation. Right. So quickly, I will explain one more time. So what are the four formal events? Formal means we have to follow. We have to do these four. We cannot escape. One is the sprint planning and then daily scrum. The third one is sprint review and the fourth one is sprint retrospective. These events work because they implement the empirical scrum pillars of transparency, inspection and adaptation. As of these events, right, because of they implement what they implement, the question might come is scrum pillars. There are three scrum pillars. The first one is transparency, second is inspection, and third one is adaptation. Now we will discuss one by one all these pillars. The first one is transparency. Name indicates transparency. Transparent means all the process of the Scrum should be visible or transparent. So again, I have written this or I have highlighted process and work. What is the meaning of this? The emergent process and work must be visible to those performing the work as well as those receiving the work. So the question might come in your exam. The emergent process must be visible or the emergent work must be visible or the emergent process and work. So you have to select this option. Process and work must be visible to those performing the work means who are performing the work and the stakeholders or the end users who are receiving the work 
everything should be transparent, clear, visible. With Scrum, important decisions are based on the perceived state of its three formal artifacts. Now, what are the artifacts? We will discuss later on, but quickly I will write down that there are three formal artifacts. Whenever you will see the word formal, it means we have to do. In Scrum, we have to do. So the first one is the product backlog. Second one is the sprint backlog. And third one is the increment, right? Product backlog. Who is responsible for product backlog? Product owner. He writes all the items here. When all the items are done, it is called the product goal. Means we have achieved our goal. This is the sprint backlog. From the product backlog, we pick one or two. As a scrum team, we select one or two or three items, whatever we could do in one sprint. And the sprint length should not be more than one month. So it is called the, when we will finish this, it is called the sprint goal. And increment is, means when we will finish our one sprint, it will add the value, means one item is done. Then the second item will come here and each sprint will add the value. It is called the increment. Increment should be for definition. DOD means definition of done, definition of done is according to specification. Suppose if Taylor makes our uh, dress, we just give him or her the size of our dress, right? This is called the specification. So same thing, whatever we do in the sprint, there should be some specification, some requirements. We have to follow those requirements. So these are the three formal artifacts we will discuss later on in detail. But here it says that with Scrum, important decisions are based on the perceived state of its three formal artifacts. Artifacts that have low transparency means less clear. If suppose our product goal is not visible, not according to our objective, can lead to decision that diminish value and increase risk. Transparency enables inspection, second pillar. The first one is transparency. If our work is transparent, then in, it enables inspection. Inspection without transparency is misleading or wasteful. What is the meaning of this sentence? That suppose if there is low transparency, things are not clear to the stakeholders or the end users. So if we will do inspection, definitely inspection will be misleading or false or wastage of time. So each and everything in Scrum should be transparent, visible. Second pillar is inspection, the Scrum artifacts and the progress toward agreed goals must be inspected frequently and diligently. Whatever we do in a sprint, we have to check. That is why we do daily scrum. Daily scrum, right, we check. What is the daily scrum? Suppose this is the sprint. We are doing framing work here. So daily scrum, we check whether we are proceeding towards our sprint goal or not, right, frequently. Product goal, we have to check once, once a week or once a month. But this one, sprint goal, we have to check daily, right? Frequently and diligently to, de de to detect potentially undesirable variants or problems. If we will find out some variants or problems, the question might come when we have to resolve, when the Scrum team has to resolve, the answer is as soon as possible to avoid further deviations. To help with inspection, Scrum provides cadence in the form of five events. I think now you know events, five events, but we will discuss later on. Inspection enables adaptation. The last pillar, inspection without adaptation is considered pointless. If we will do inspection and we'll see that there is some deviation and we are not going to adopt it, it means it is pointless uh, inspection. So when we do inspection frequently and diligently, if we see any undesirable variant, we have to adopt, we have to try to solve that variance as soon as possible. Scrum events are designed to provoke change. And the last is adaptation. If any aspects of the process deviate outside acceptable limits or if the resulting product is unacceptable, suppose we are making framing or we are doing a framing work, at the end it is it is unacceptable. So the process being applied or the material being produced must be adjusted when 
as soon as possible why to minimize further deviation these question might come in your exam as well adaptation becomes more difficult when the people involved are not empowered or self managing what is the meaning of self managing means they should know the developer should know how to do work when to do work and who is responsible for the particular particular work i scrum team is expected to adapt the moment it learns anything new through inspection right so here i have made the pillars scrum pillars there are three pillars transparency inspection and adaptation i hope the concept is clear see you in the next video and thank you